Welcome everybody uh, to the Dharamsala International Film Festival. Uh, this year is our 10th edition and we are so excited uh, you know, that we've made it so far and, you know, are on our journey on this journey has been so difficult and we've made it to this point. So it's been really, it's an amazing year for us. Um, uh, our team has put together a really good selection of films. We have amazing panels and workshops. So I hope you'll be joining us. Um, I'm very happy to introduce this panel. We have uh, Hansel Mehta, Juhi Chaturvedi and Raja Sen and uh, they're gonna be taking over from me um, and going into this conversation very soon. I'd like to mention something special. The first year of DIFF, uh, our opening night film was Hansel Mehta's Shahid. So, uh, you know, thank you so much Hansel uh, for joining us and I hope you're gonna be back next year with your uh, next film. Thank you. Handing over to you, Raja. Thank you, Ritu. I'm really excited about this conversation with two very interesting, very different kinds of uh, makers here, Hansal and Juhi, who both, now we're talking about the, the streaming space, the uh, OTT space, as it were, where Hansal has had one of the biggest, most monster hits of all time in his uh, Scam 1992, and is also now making films for that platform. Juhi's written her first series, has written dialogues for another OTT series, and... Uh, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see how, as a writer and as a as a director, they feel this space is different from other spaces creatively. What challenges it has, what limitations it has, and uh, we'll get into a lot of that. And if any of you have any questions uh, while watching, please uh, keep sending them in. We might not get to them till the till later in the session, but we'll try and go through all of them as many as we can. So, so yeah, shall we just begin with? Uh, what both of you feel is the most exciting thing about this new way of entertainment, this new way, this new format, so to speak, of the OTT platforms. Hansel? Uh, I, I, I'm just, uh, you know, excited to be able to tell these long stories. Hmm. Uh, you know, the long format has been very liberating. You're not limited uh, one by, you know, uh, the past history that, you know, this has worked, this has not worked. And uh, this person gets you so many numbers on Friday. Uh, you know, so I'm not bogged down by uh, one, uh, I'm not bogged down by pressure. Secondly, I have the freedom to tell the story for as long as I want. Uh, you know, I can, you know, take a character and really build something uh, around the character. I can explore the character. I can explore the world and I can explore characters. You know, you're not stuck to that single protagonist, the hero versus the antagonist versus the protagonist kind of uh, format. Yes, you have a protagonist, you have somebody you root for, but you have multiple characters, you know. And if, so creating that world, I think uh, it's an exploration of a larger world that I find really uh, exciting and also quite liberating for now, at least. Hmm. Right. And Juhi, you've been responsible for some of the most memorable film characters of the last uh, decade and change. You know, there's been a lot of really interesting characters, really interesting films. And so this is a different space. Again, it's long form storytelling, as Hansel said. Do you find that uh, like a you know whole different format? Like, is it like short, short stories versus a novel or is it uh, like a different limitation? See, I I agree with Sir completely. What when he says it's so liberating, hmm. I, you know, you can just explore and it's endless. It's like वो घड़ा होता है जिसमें छेदे आप जितना डालते जाओ भरेगा नहीं. So according, I feel that OTT gives you at least that kind of platform. That I mean, it's a platform where you can just keep on exploring and whether it's one more episode, another episode, and I mean, I came from advertising background where thirty second to a feature film was a big liberation. liberation. Mm -hmm. But now when you see a film, like one hour, 20 minutes or whatever, from that to a series, it's another space altogether. How much can you write? How, at what point are you going to tell yourself that, okay, this is enough? Because that greed, like you said, you to explore the character and the story of each character, it can just go on and on and on. And at some point in time, you have to say, okay, this season ends here and it, needs to move on to another or whichever way it doesn't. 
So as a format, it's extremely liberating. Having said that, uh, purely from writing point of view, whether it's a short film, whether it's a five second, uh, you know, just not five second, a uh, five minute short film, or it's a feature film, whatever it is, you know, for a writer or for any filmmaker, unless and until you have a solid idea, unless and until you have that much to say, genuine stuff to say, there's no need to venture, no matter how lengthy or how, you know, whatever the format be, the idea needs to be your priority. Good writing still needs to be your priority. Uh, in this case, more so because, you know, the remote is in the audiences and at any point it can be a switch button off. So uh, that way, I, I just feel that uh, your, the, the skill needed still has to be, you have to be on top of your game to get something like a scam out there. I mean, it wasn't even in one of those most popular platforms, but it's still like, I know so many people, all of us downloaded that app just to be able to see and a fantastic word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Now for an Indian show, to have that kind of phenomenal reach, it's not because the platform is there. Yes, platform is there, but the show on its own has that kind of solid merit. So unless certainly you have, you have that kind of uh, you know supremacy on your content, even if you have a format there, even if you have a you know platform there, it won't cut the ice. You know, so yeah, we have the provision, hmm. but the prerequisite is still a solid content that you need to have I, I feel it, it's so, like one more medium there right and you are putting yourself that much more out to get scrutinized to get you know dissected it's one more way people can do that to you know it was only happening in cinemas now it's happening inside their homes at their time sure sure no and it's also a lot more of whatever you were doing so when we are looking at say a film which is you know a script is between 100 and 130 odd pages and you're you're filming that over say two two and a half months you know uh, but whereas when you're doing a, a series with you know eight episodes one hour episodes Hansel we're talking about like let, let's just get into specifics here how long did you shoot for scam and you know how many pages were you shooting a day so before we started shooting you know mm -hmm. I mean we started writing in mm -hmm. 2017 November Okay. And we began shooting in uh, September, 1st of September, 2019. Okay. So, see, the entire year, 2018, uh, most of 2019 was spent writing. Hmm. Uh, and of course, doing all the other prep, casting and other things. And Prati Gandhi was signed as soon as we began writing in 2018. And he just kept trying to put on weight. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the it's a patient game. It's a game of patience. You know, you have to wait. That writing is organic. You keep writing, rewriting, take, you know, getting distant from the material, then getting attached to it again. So it's a, it's a painful, uh, it can be a painful process. So we had a 600 page uh, script. Okay. So 10 episodes, each episode on an average was 50 minutes plus. Okay. And uh, uh, we had nearly 600 pages, 570 pages, I think. And, uh, uh, but we had very little money. I mean, I, uh, you know, people tell you that, oh, there's a lot of money in OTT and all that. I mean, I went into OTT with the same baggage of being a low budget filmmaker. Uh, so, you know, I had, there was, uh, there was not enough money. I mean, you know, it was, a, there was no star cast. There was nothing. And uh, so it was a dark horse in that sense. So we, I had to finish in, uh, so we finished shooting in 88 days. Okay. Um, yeah, so which uh, was a decent uh, time. I mean, we were shooting on an average around seven to eight pages a day. Hmm. You know, so this this whole page count and all that has become even more. Uh, you know, you have to find some metric to see how well you are doing. So right. you count pages per day, and uh, so yeah, around eighty eight days. But yeah, it was. Uh, I think more than shooting, the challenge was you know prepping for it, the writing, and. Uh, you know, immersing yourself before you, you know, there's a side story to it. I mean, I, uh, since I made Simran, I made Simran, then I made Chalang, uh, I was getting increasingly frustrated with the demands of uh, the films that I was expected to make. Hmm. 
So in that sense, uh, in terms this of box office like friendliness, a, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that you know, accessibility, box office friendliness. So you're told that oh, you're a good filmmaker, but you know, आप ऐसे करो, आप थोड़ा बड़ा बनाओ, आप थोड़ा इधर ये डाल दो, दो गाने ऐसे डाल दो, one Punjabi song here, you know, so वो care नहीं करता, डाल दो. Hmm. And so there were those those things that were happening, and I was feeling very stifled. So in that sense, this became like this major. Uh, you know, I uh, it was almost like a vacation for me, where I did not have to think of those things. Right. And uh, so it was uh, a lot of where you know there was no pressure on casting. There was no pressure on. Uh, you know, I chose the team. The my DOP had just returned. Young boy who had returned from. Uh, people thought that I had some. Son that I had hidden away in uh, uh, in the US, he returned from LA. His surname was Meta, and he has a round face. So they thought I had, <laughs> I had some. This is I'm paying back some old <laughs> old sin. <laughs> but but it was a uh, so. But I could experiment, and uh, you know I think the best work comes up comes out of that sense of experimentation means. You're free. You're free to try new things. Free to do things, and that I think that is purely one of the reasons. That and patience. Hmm. Those are two main, uh, uh, you know, virtues. Right. No patience is definitely one of the demands. It's like it demands patience of the viewer. You know, it demands a commitment when you're talking about, say, a ten episode, one hour, see, you know, series. But also, like uh, Juhi, in, in terms of writing. now when hansel says that you know they had to shoot for 88 days and they were shooting you know uh, almost 600 minutes of uh, of tv similarly with but with writing then uh, it's not as uh, cut and dry no because you're sometimes there are films which maybe it's not about page count right the film might be uh, an hour and a half long but you might have worked on it for years and years and years so is the process of it being serialized is it somehow like easier as a writer to get into that to engage with those characters over a longer period of time so it, it's not easy in fact uh, i would say it gets tougher because now you have that much more time with you and what are you going to write with that time right in in film in a feature you know that you have to you know end the story find the loops you know close them everything you have that much time and yeah you follow the main lead characters track and you're with him and maybe few other characters and you do to best of your capability but platform gives you the the liberation if you're seeking and it says yeah here take it all do whatever with it now that freedom that kind of liberation is is very scary because uh, uh then at one hand you have everything that you have been craving for yeah. but uh, uh if it's not done well if it's not written well if it's not thought through i mean you can lose the track where it started and given the feedbacks given the involvement of people given the you know huge uh, usually you know you'll have many many characters their journey their tracks everything it could have started somewhere and I, and what it can do it may be testing that by the end of it you may just be writing something which you didn't think you had started writing unless and until you are completely in control of of at least the the your thought your idea behind it because yes. uh, there are so many stakeholders in it this you know your work will go for reviewing you will get back feedbacks i mean my so far the experience has been that they they may give you like two page or three page feedback but they also tell you okay just see but how much you want to take from here so you know it is a lot that is resting on your decision sure okay? and and that is uh, something which which uh, is not easy to handle you can go drastically wrong and especially in our country like we when we know that there are certain kind of things will definitely work hmm. the, the the worry is that you don't start doing that then you are not different from you know what was anyway is happening right mm. the this platform has been given i would feel that you can experiment you can create something new you can come up with a slightly more you know a, a newer voice if you have if you have that kind of 
which which perhaps a theater was not allowing you to or a or a feature maybe because of restriction of time doesn't let you but uh, it, it doesn't become easy it gets in fact tougher i would say you know right so i meant because you get to live with those characters that you've created for longer you know you just get to explore them uh, yes. and of course that's that's delving yes, into it so it's not easy it, it's a lot more uh, i would say it's the greed hmm. right uh, 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 it doesn't get easy it just satisfies your uh, desire to be with rewarding your partners, in a different way engage with them live with them like you said you know they they are anyways part of your lives whether bhaskar or piku or rana they continue to be part of my life now imagine if they were in a you know longish format they would have actually been there for that kind of time but still there needs to be something to say about them just because platform allows you to do that there's no need i mean a, a, a half an hour story a short film on a platform with a really solid idea is also good enough i needn't write an episode show only just because it's it's giving me that freedom sure and as an advertising person i guess the economy of storytelling is very important and I, that's yeah, like- it it starts there it has to you know remain closer to the purpose of creating stories or mm-hmm. cinema or whatever it is i mean it cannot be uh, because i have something available so let me just you know create more and more irrelevant stuff because my fear is it, it's also there's so much out there plenty itna zyada hai ki i just feel ki shayad wo filter khatam wo kamzor padta ja raha hai it's not filtering it right no and that itna zyada hai is becoming a serious problem because there are now so many platforms you know every other week new platforms are coming in you know it's just becoming a glut of uh, new shows and what is being called you know it's not even being called cinema or a series anymore they're just calling it content content it's yeah being, yeah being driven down uh, you know viewers throats in that sense and in on some levels we are watching a lot of it and seeing that it's basically india is taking this ott terminology too seriously and it is very over the top it is very uh, you know exaggerated it is it is following you know taking some of our worst instincts but uh, hansa let me come to you first with this when you look at as someone who makes films and you know as someone who's making ott as well how are you choosing what subject is right for what do you think there are things that film does not allow you to do and that ott does better no actually uh, you know i think ultimately it's choice of subject hmm. uh, you know you get to tell a story and a subject sort of chooses the format uh, so uh, you know the, uh, like harshad mehta story i felt uh, you know in 2005 hmm. before i made woodstock villa actually i was pitching the uh, i had read this book by sujata dalal and i was pitching that idea to film producers hmm. and nobody wanted to touch it they said they are financial thriller and all that doesn't work here so there were ideas ke are ab you know, wall street ko remake kar do so that was the peak of the remake season hmm. so uh, you know ki remake wall street ki usme thoda aise kar denge some something here and so uh, it did not happen i am lucky that it did not happen you know uh, this uh, this story needed that kind of space because it is a, these are complicated concepts mm. uh, and uh, you know we see uh, we are going through a learning curve you know this when you were saying that you know there's so much that is happening right now we have unfortunately not had the hbo phase in our uh, lives mm. uh, you know where uh, they uh, you know for 20 years they've been making stuff learning from it you know we uh, got introduced to the long format through perhaps breaking bad mad men mm. you know Uh, a handful of shows the wire and we have started we've we've tried to one maybe emulate trying to learn the craft from what we have seen and then you know uh, now there's so much that uh, before we learn the craft i think we uh, market forces have sort of converged and they've said ki bhai yahan par you know there's this empty vessel usme matlab bharte jao Uh, so uh, that uh, that is always a danger but uh, i think like it happens in films uh, good work will stand out uh, and uh, you know the good thing is that uh, right now there are no metrics to measure 
success. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, there are some vague metrics. It's, you know, subscribers increase, uh, the increase in subscriber base when a show releases, but it does not, it, you know, the verdict is not delivered in two, three days. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, yeah, this is one medium where uh, a, a critic's uh, uh, review uh, mm-hmm. matters more. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, that a show, like, uh, you know, a show like uh, Tabbar, hmm. which I saw recently, I mean, it's a very nice, very nicely crafted uh, right. show. The reviews have sort of driven uh, its, you know, growing viewership. Hmm. And I think that is, uh, uh, that has really helped us uh, in terms of, uh, you know, being conscious about what we are making. Hmm. and how we are making it you know there is that that compulsion ki yahan ye gana dal do wo kar do those things are not there you know we are uh, we are encouraged not to follow uh, formula hmm. but yeah usme matlab you will always have the rotten apples uh, i think the studio executives also i mean the platform executives also are learning hmm. uh, nobody knows uh, what really succeeds what really you know they are all going by numbers that have been given to them by some algorithmic machine. Uh, you know, and there's so many, I mean, the data is so dense. Hmm. We really don't know uh, how uh, that is uh, working. So I think it has, it's come with an advantage and a disadvantage uh, for us. Uh, and I, I'm trying to use it to my advantage. Hmm. That, you know, there's so many stories uh, that you want to tell and I'm trying to tell them uh, hmm. on this uh, medium also i mean it's not limited to the short format i'm saying you know uh, i'm making films uh, what happened after scam is and i start getting offered more films and people said ki wo aap jaisi bana to waisi bana because they realize ki this can go to digital mm. and you know i will not be bogged down by uh, the uh, requirements of the box office sure you know so uh, i think that uh, uh, you know, films also uh, will be made for uh, digital uh, consumption. And uh, I mean, you know, Sardar Udham Singh, for example, I mean, uh, a film like that, you know, it's a, uh, uh, it's a very, uh, I don't know how to describe the film. It's, uh, it's an experience. Hmm. And I think while, you know, a lot of us would have loved to see it on the big screen and sort of get immersed in that world. Uh, I don't think uh, that much of an audience would have watched it. Sure. As the audience it has found, the love it has found uh, on uh, uh, OTT, Hmm. uh, you know, I don't uh, necessarily think it'll... The the yardstick there is Surya Vanchi. And it is very unfair. It is very unfair that you are forced to make something that has to measure up to... uh, a yardstick that you necessarily don't want to really adhere to. Right. It's not an aspirational yardstick. Yeah. You know, also, uh, like Juhi, you had one of the first uh, films that pivoted to digital only release was Gulabo Sitabo uh, that you made with Shujit. Now, again, that's a very, almost an experimental mainstream film in that it is a satire. It is about the idea of India. It is about these, you know, old, this old character, you know, crotchety character. So it was very unlike Piku and like uh, Vicky Donner, both of your earlier collaborations with those actors. So do you think having that on Amazon and having the OTT audience discover it gradually at, it, at their own pace, do you think that uh, led to a deeper understanding of the film than maybe theatrical would have engaged, engagement would have been different? Yeah, I mean, uh, when it was made, obviously nobody thought that it would go on OTT, okay. but uh, I think it was a blessing in disguise. Like you said, that um, people got their own time to connect with that film, with the language, with the way the world was created and, and uh, maybe something like that on uh, theaters and cinema may have not got that kind of uh, uh, reach. Again, you know, it's not just then the good part of OTT is not just restricted to your own country. It goes, it travels everywhere, mm. right? So people across have seen it, have managed to see it and and uh, uh, at their own pace, they've seen it. The pace of the film has been of a certain kind, whether it was this or October also. I mean, again, now when you look back, say maybe October would have done even better if it was OTT. 
right so uh, yeah so those uh, things are definitely there you uh, um, and again you know if if uh, people are trying to evolve hmm. you know when they are willing to to see shows like scam or when they are and and not just hindi or you know specific language i'm saying look at the amount of uh, uh, shows or movies that have come to us thanks to ott like the malayalam cinema has moved you know, yeah. the, the content whether it's bengali whether it's malayalam whether it's telugu whether it's tamil whatever i mean it's a odd tabar for the mm. example punjabi mm. we would have never had that luxury you know we would have been so restricted by the region we are watching mm. right so it, it gets easy for films like that are so specific to a region to mm. still cut that boundary and go beyond so gulabo sitabo while it's a hindi film but it's a very specific region it's talking about in in cinema i don't know how many people would have you know enjoyed it they would have definitely come for mr bachchan or for ayushman mm. but it requires a certain investment right you got your time your thinking all of that and and that ott you know gives you okay if you don't want to watch it this week watch it another week watch it another week wait for more reviews if you're still not sure of it sure. so I, the the process is not harsh on the audience you know it gives them good content hmm. good material i hate these words <laughs> but these are the words this is these are the words that we use now uh, at their own sweet time they can you know see and and critique it. Okay, they can they can try it out right i mean everything isn't for everybody i mean which is something that as 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 filmmakers i think a lot of us to go against it thinking about you know widening the appeal and hitting more of a spectrum but when it's like you know you're making something which you know certain people are going to are, are meant to enjoy so they can find that at their own you know discover it on their own terms uh, hansel something you said that was very interesting a little while ago was the fact that you think it's an advantage that there are no uh, success metrics and i think that's the one of the interesting things about that is the fact that there uh, while there are no success metrics there are now what we are measuring success in the is terms of um, you know online engagement for example the fact that you know your uh, show has a line like rishk hai to is ishq hai and that becomes a meme you know that that sort of engagement is not something that can be faked anymore because in in hindi cinema with all its spurious box office figures every film would send an uh, you know a press release on monday saying the film is the film is already a hit and all of that and we never knew what to believe and you know believed very little of it but with this kind of stuff you are seeing that there is actual conversation that cannot be faked you know and this is quite heartening and exciting right yeah it's also i mean you know i experienced it for the first time uh, mm. that kind of madness uh, you know when the show was uh, released mm. i mean uh, uh, the show re- uh, released at midnight on the i think 8th of october or 9th of october last year and i was still completing the 10th episode mm. uh, the post production of the final episode was not over i delivered the last three episodes at around 8:30 pm mm. and uh, the platform was sitting on my head finish 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 this finish this and so i had no time to really uh, even dwell i my uh, my only uh, priority was you know deliver the damn thing hmm. uh, so the 10th episode actually people reviewed nine episodes and said you know uh, we are looking forward to the second season and the, i said no no there's one episode yet to come <laughs> so the 10th episode uh, appeared 24 hours later at midnight okay uh, so yeah so but and then i went off on a holiday and mm. that's what i do normally you know i run away uh, the moment something comes out so i went off on a holiday and then uh, you know uh, the weekend was over and then those memes started they started with the trailers actually risk hai to ish hai just took off but the other lines you know things when i was shooting things that i found cheesy mm. i wanted to constantly i used to tell them yaar i said yaar do it uh, you know it's written and you know we are under contract to shoot whatever is written hmm. so shoot it i let i let it it out so we tried to do it convincingly something like uh, success kya hai failure ke baad ka naya chapter i said this is sounding awful yeah this is so cheesy hmm. but there are memes now hmm. you know it's all all those things have become memes uh, and uh, so it was a learning curve i mean we were learning that you know there's a different kind of engagement 
and the engagement is like the excitement we saw on you know, the monday after it released hmm. uh, went up it was upward graph the week after it was more the week after it was even greater and suddenly uh, you know 6 uh, to 8 weeks later we realized pratik gandhi has become a star hmm. you know so uh, uh, and you know everybody or everybody around us i'm shreya everybody suddenly started getting calls and noticed and i mean uh, you know uh, so it it was a the, the, that experience it's very organic i feel you know if you fake it here hmm. you know that it's being faked right you know because the pr machinery you see ultimately the entire machinery of the industry is still the same and the same people who are promoting these shows so they try to i will they will definitely try you still have media net hmm. you know you still have you will still try to fake uh, and many platforms do that you know there is this lot of fake success there is still ormax which has uh, mysterious metrics hmm. uh, you know uh, ormax top 10 all time something something i mean you know <laughs> which <laughs> so uh, there there is there is lot of mystery even now and there is a lot of pr machinery but there is a parallel world hmm. which Uh, is not which is run by uh, people that you never thought would influence uh, our our thinking and our decision making and uh, you know like cartoonists like suddenly caricaturing and you know uh, all these uh, popular characters those dialogues the amount of uh, fan posters the fan art that we got mm. you know, i have a full collection of all that printed fan art people just kept sending it to me i don't know where to put it Mm-hmm. lots of fan art coming in all those memes so yeah i mean i think uh, the joy of succeeding here is much greater let's put it that way mm-hmm. uh, you know because you uh, you seeing it you experiencing it first hand nobody is faking it right. uh, when it's really happening when it, when you when you're faking it you know it everybody knows it no and also the fact is when you say that the engagement just goes up and up it's also yeah. part of this uh, current online only generations uh, need to catch up with things so when they are seeing the memes happen they want to be a part of it they want to speak that language so they have to see what's going on in order to you know be part of that communal experience you know i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit concerned about it rather that this very soon because you know executives need to find quick fixes mm-hmm. they're not going to wait 6 weeks to have answers mm-hmm. you know you have to answer a board which wants an answer every week so they will find simplistic uh, means to uh, quantify success and that will lead to destruction you know when you find very simple metrics you know in one week we had so many subscriptions some some nonsense metrics you know one dimensional metrics will come up uh, and that that metric will uh, you know sort of guide the way the friday came i mean when i was growing up mm. when i was in school we used to look at silver jubilees and golden jubilees you know films running for like the 100 day poster would come out 50 right. days 100 days golden jubilee people would have all these uh, platinum jubilee and golden jubilee plaques in their uh, house you know actors uh, like iftikhar was my neighbor uh, okay. and his house is full of uh you know silver yeah. jubilee and golden jubilee uh, right. trophy so it meant something that the film ran for so long now i mean uh, you deliver the verdict in 3 days which because of uh the decision making process mm. our system is you know, designed to deliver results quickly because uh, you know the board wants answers the shareholders want answers and they want definite answers they're not ready to look at subjective answers you know and uh, i think that's where uh, the red flag is going to be ultimately right no it's it's very uh, it's very cool i mean when you say these kinds of arbitrary metrics they are already happening i mean netflix for example worldwide has been criticized a lot for the fact that you know you watch 2 minutes of a netflix series it calculates it as a whole series being viewed you know so all of those metrics are uh, you know their own thing and they're trying to find their own way forward but uh, juhi do you think like when you say october for example on digital uh, you know people have reached out or people have engaged more with the film 
do you think that you know the the way the ott has i think accelerated in india over the last year and a half primarily because of covid that everyone's been forced to you know just consume digitally um that's also helped people grow up a little right i mean i think when you say malayalam cinema i think the fact that i think people are open to watching stuff with subtitles a lot more than they were ever i think yeah yeah absolutely so there there is a significant evolution i would say that has happened thanks to you know the the kind of consumption that has happened in last one one and a half years it's it's become a necessity actually it became a necessity um what would you do at home if if uh, you don't have a subscription and you don't watch these shows so uh, i would say that uh, it's it's good for the creative space as a whole hmm. therefore that you know where and and people are very unforgiving you know we should not uh, uh, forget that that uh, doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter what you've created in the past if you like he said if you're faking it they they're going to just move past i mean in in cinema halls perhaps they were not able to do that they were still going out of pressure weekend pressure i have to watch this film over the weekend otherwise you know weekday begins and my family outing and all of those specials are there so you're bound to do that this they are engaging with you uh on their own terms hmm. you've created you've put it out there now it's up to me what i want to watch when i want to watch how i want to watch right so here your people are i i would say they are far more um, in control hmm. they are the decision maker not some marketing fields uh, marketing uh, you know team sitting out there who like announces the verdict hmm. and and that just uh, i think is a good reason enough to to put that kind of pressure on it not pressure but that, that kind of consciousness or that kind of awareness with which you are creating because people are exposed to something from some another part of the world and they are viewing your show or your film or your novel whatever it is your part of anthology it's the same audience it's like you know how in advertising the guy who wears an adidas mm. is perhaps also the guy who would uh, go and 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 look at uh, levis and also the guy who would invest in a certain kind of home loan so it's mm. not that you know the the mind is is the same you can't say that okay for my show this will work no hmm. the audience has evolved now hmm. and and it's it's good in that sense that uh, uh, people are actually rejecting also a lot of things which are coming there on ott so that's that's a good sign that just because you're pumping it down my throat doesn't mean that i'm going to you know approve of it and and like like i said people are not forgiving you will you will get the brunt of it if you're not being uh, sincere about what you're creating irrespective of uh, how much money is pumped in no matter what the production quality whatever mm. it is ultimately it boils down to is it show worth their time sure, sure. and and you're right absolutely in terms of the, them being unforgiving over this uh, last uh, during the pandemic we've had you know one akshay kumar film one ajay devgan film one salman khan film all being completely rejected by audiences so i think they are more discerning at home without yeah. the pressure of other people around them without the pressure of having to pay for a film ticket right. and all of that uh, but while on that hansal i just want to come to one thing and i think your show is on the uh, more fortunate side of that what might be a divide almost but in terms of the the censorship on ott you know there is a lot happening now it's it seems to have gotten worse is what the reports are saying most platforms are self censoring in fear of controversies that will break out and so when you were doing scam and you've taken a lot of real names you know done a lot of uh, you've you've stuck to a book and you've you know gone with it uh, what were the legal implications were you were you afraid of scam was there always a part that thought that at the last minute characters would be renamed well there was i mean uh, to be honest uh, there was a it was a challenge uh, you know initially there was a legal team that vetted it in 2017 or 2018 the scripts were given to the legal team they read it and they asked us to change certain names which we did they said you know this is not substantiated by the book we did that uh, so as to not create confusion but when the show was ready after it was edited uh, you know major legal team sort of descended upon us and they asked us to cut a lot 
I mean, I it would have meant the last three episodes were almost mutilated. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a big fight. I mean, with uh, nearly four months, the show would have released earlier. It was a four month uh, fight where most of that time was spent in me sulking. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but that uh, that that fight was worth fighting. We we sort of uh, reached a compromise, and uh, there was still twenty percent censorship. We had to cut out some stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I have uh, on this cloud based platform on which we sort of edit our thing. I've got a whole collection of deleted scenes, and some of them were really. I feel very bad that they were not there. But the, it wasn't as bad as it has progressively uh, become. Sure. Know? Uh, the pandemic has sort of brought to the fore, you know, while people have started watching a lot of content, it has also given them enough time mm. to be, uh, you know, uh, abusive, to be intolerant, to be, uh, you know, take uh, offense to the smallest thing. And there are, there's a, there are powers above them who, I mean, there's a political discussion, but the powers above them who thrive on this, you mm. know, in this diversionary and this is the best way to divert uh, attention, use, and what better soft target than an industry which uh, thrives on its silence? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, so you keep ham- So the soft target has constantly been attacked, and uh, there is, uh, I mean, there's fear. The the, the poli- you know, nothing political uh, should be written. If it is, it is like completely. Either it's dumbed down or it is set in some, fan, uh, you know, uh, it's set in a fantasy, uh, in some fantasy land. Uh, and uh, so nothing political, religious. Uh, so, you know, for, there's a uh, thing I'm working on for one of the platforms. So it's a love story. But, uh, you know, there's a religious aspect involved. I can't divulge more. There's a religious aspect involved and uh, they said, oh, just change the religion. I said, I mean, it's not about the religion. There's a cultural uh, backdrop that I'm creating because of the person's uh, religion and upbringing. You're asking me to change, like, you know, telling me to, uh, you know, go to a shoot, uh, go for my shoot in a swimming costume. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I have to wear what I'm comfortable in. You know, the story needs that backdrop. But it's, uh, I mean, they... That's what, again, this is people with a lack of, so when I sat with legal teams mm-hmm. and, you know, who were worried that, you know, there'll be a backlash. So basically censorship as such is, does not exist. Mm-hmm. They feel, they take offense to the word censorship. When you tell them that you're censoring my content, they get offended by it. What has happened is that, uh, unfortunately, legal teams are not really, uh, I think they need little more of sensitization. We need more lawyers who understand uh, the creative uh, process and who understand expression uh, that is, uh, you know, they, that is free, but that is not necessarily offensive. So that that understanding has to be there. I mean, you we, uh, you will not censor succession. Okay? Right. Succession comes, but on uh, a Hindi show, uh, you know, you will uh, mute all the fucks and suddenly one fuck will be allowed because uh, I don't know the context that one fuck right. is allowed, three fucks are not allowed. So I don't know what that means. So uh, it's it's a bit again. Everyone is learning, you know. It's, they're learning on the job, and yes, there is a there is fear. There is fear, but I've not encountered it, so I should not be complaining. I've encountered it for a brief period, and uh, you can fight it out to some extent. I think we have to. Uh, we have always been responsible. I don't see us being uh, crazily irresponsible in what we say. Hmm. Yeah, know, I mean, you know, I, I think the I mean the case for creative recklessness is more than it is uh, made out to be. But when you have, uh, you know, I mean, for as filmmakers, you've always faced some very peculiar censor requirements. You know, you've always been told things like, you know, make it eighteen percent less bloody, or you know, make a kiss scene, you know, for you know, forty-two percent shorter, <laughs> or whatever. That so, that is not there. <laughs> that's not there on that, OTT, is what you're saying. That, that's not there because there's no, there's no real, there's no CBFC, there's no formal, uh, you know, censoring body. Every platform has its own regulatory uh, team, and uh, you know now they've become extra careful. So while you're writing only, they start 
so you sort of negotiate that uh, slippery slope then mm. and you take a call i mean is it is it too slippery then you know you rather not make that you know make something else make something silly right uh, you know uh, so that uh, i have not really faced it because i think ultimately it's the intent and mm. that's what you know the people who uh, regulate this content need to uh, be more sensitive to the intent of uh, the filmmaker you know mm. and also to understand if somebody has made something see, there's uh, there's bad uh, there's a bad story there's bad storytelling and you know bash bash it for that not for its politics you know no absolutely there is a i mean the one of the principal issues is that when you are looking at you know these things in isolation they seem fine but when you're when you're seeing them all together when you're seeing all these people actively on the back foot you know the people who are supposed to be fighting for your story the legal teams of these platforms are supposed to be fighting in order to let you tell the story you want to tell but the, but because everyone on the defensive because everyone is everyone speaking their battles and uh, it it is uh, you know a scary ground to be on i mean i think when ott's first started when netflix began with sacred games the first season in india and it seemed to be kind of ground breaking in terms of the violence and the uh, how explicit it could be and the language and all of that uh, there was almost a juvenile rush to make things more violent and make things more explicit and i think i think that also kind of upset the apple cart a little bit that just became everyone wanted to make a bloody abusive crime drama yeah. and that just uh, you know yeah, uh, I, think, i think that's one of the reasons of- that's one of the reasons scam worked Hmm. that they did not follow you know it there was its formulaic tendency right okay, you have bad words you have you have lots of expletives you make it explicit you have gore hmm. and you think it works hmm. uh, so it sort of broke uh, those uh, uh, stereotypes but yeah i mean we are, i'll tell you uh, as i say we are, we are in a learning curve everybody is learning hmm. as as they go along nobody really knows how we are going to be censored in the future yes we we have lessons to learn korea is a uh, is an absolute lesson uh, for everybody here from the platforms to the executives to the filmmakers to everyone to the government mm. that you know how do you uh, sort of encourage this culture of storytelling what what has it done has it upset has it uh, showed the government in a bad light but they they are critical mm. of uh, their world their system without it uh, making without a hypersensitive government i mean so i think there is a lot to learn for everyone now yeah, but unfortunately the thing we seem to be learning most about korea is the fact that several producers are in the market hunting for a squid game type of show <laughs> in india all right i'm going to just open the floor because we have a lot of questions and i've been signaled that it's time so let me let me start with this one which has nothing to do with ott but uh, it asks would juhi ever want to write a fiction novel or is that a very different format for her fiction novel yeah that's very interesting yeah why not why not if if i have uh, that kind of you know something inside me tells me to write that book then it it would be i'm sure it'll be written but uh, as of now no voice from inside has said that <laughs> i i actually love the medium quite a bit the the medium that i am in currently the visual the sound the you know all of that i i quite like that but yeah why not in future right great point hansal about india not having the legacy of golden tv like the us before the streaming boom most of these were hollywood rejects battle hardened by doing tv to survive like vince gilligan matthew weiner but it is seeming like otts who were disruptors in other industries are moving more towards bollywoodization without any negative connotation of alternate storytelling do you agree i need uh, can you translate the question <laughs> basically he's saying that uh, you know your point about golden golden peak television golden age of television all of that is fine but otts have disrupted other industries in india seem to be taking alternate storytelling and kind of bollywoodizing it do you see that happening well it's see it's bound to be there 
you know uh, i uh, i personally believe we should not really i mean we we have for too of for too long we put everything under this bollywood this one basket called bollywood hmm. you know everything about bollywood is not bad uh and uh, i think uh, there's a this place there's there's enough place for everything mm-hmm. i just feel that uh, the the people say say a big star decides to do a show mm-hmm. i think he needs to then evaluate what he is doing based on uh not on the basis of you know like a sharukh khan cannot go dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge today mm-hmm. on an ott platform he needs to uh move beyond that you know we i think uh what needs to happen is that reinvention needs to uh, happen i mean here you have a place where you're not under pressure to uh you know get those friday numbers but you have the opportunity to do something really spectacular mm-hmm. and i think uh that's where you know a lot of this talent you know whether it is bollywood or non bollywood or whatever that talent needs to converge to uh, tell the tell those amazing stories because you have that possibility here and if it allows you to raise the game if it allows me to raise money uh, mm-hmm. even on uh, on an ott platform to tell the story of some scale to tell an epic a story of epic proportions the presence of a star if it helps me uh, you know but both sides have to understand that this you are not making a cheap clone of a bollywood film mm-hmm. what has happened so far is that you know all these big star uh, vehicles on ott have been uh, uh, you know almost bollywoodized like they uh, they uh, they are cheap imitations they're pretending to be hindi films hmm. and that is the danger you know that there's no innovation there there's nothing uh, that you're trying to you're not trying to break that stereotype except perhaps you know saif ali khan in uh, uh, sacred games sure uh, you know and that saif ali khan has done that in films also he is constantly reinvented himself so i think saif ali khan is the example for everyone uh, from the popular cinema format who comes in here to follow that you know try try new things you mm. know you might fail I mean, with a tandav he might have failed mm. but he tried sure yeah i mean and and the other big example from the cinema world is of course uh, manoj bajpai who's found a manoj. different league he's the action hero of the country right now because of Absolutely. family man which is fantastic manoj bajpai you know fahad fasil who would have thought that fahad fasil hmm. would be a household name hmm. you know like the malayalam industry was always because of the size of the telugu and tamil industry hmm. the malayalam industry was complete but last uh, 18 to 20 months hmm. have uh, I mean, Fahad Fazil is a huge star. You know, certainly. And, and things home, are happening. Know. Things are happening. Really, it's really fascinating what's happening there right now, guys. Because I was, I was speaking to one, one of the actors there. I was speaking to Dulkar Salman, and we were discussing the the cycle of the Malayalam film industry. And he said that there now there is so much of a focus on making cinema that's intellectual. He's like it's become the other way around. It's become some parallel world wherein he says we are talking to producers and we are trying to make an entertainer, and they are like, but can't you add something political? Can't you add some more layers to it? And I was like, wow, that's a that's a funhouse mirror version of what what we have to go there. Let's go there. You know the other, you know that's the the other thing that I mean uh, I must say what uh, this has done is I have never experienced this. You know I've been making films for twenty six years now. i have never experienced this you know i when i was traveling like after scam release a mm. month later i would go to a cafe wherever i would go the mm. amount of pictures that people clicked with me mm. you almost felt vindicated that okay as a creator uh, you found that uh, recognition that people mm. are recognizing you for uh, your work that you know wherever i would go i would go to an airport uh, people would you know uh, Uh, come to me i have not acted my face has not been that visible but people uh, pay attention to the creator hmm. uh, and that i think uh, is extremely encouraging hmm. sure okay now uh, next question is is and this is for both of you is what do you think of the hybrid model for online and offline releases of films now this is becoming a big you know strategic discussion everywhere should films be released only online only offline both together at the same time how does it work so 
let's have let's have some thoughts here as people who are both going to have releases over the next few months i think uh, uh, in theaters and ott i think people need to work together you know the the people sitting you know the, the distributors for cinema halls and you know the ott teams because now what pandemic has made us realize that there is a higher force which is beyond you know you me and our economy there is something called virus there is something called pandemic and it's going to i mean we this is for the first time in our generation has experienced something like that right this this whole last last hundred years and um, it only makes sense for everyone's benefit for everyone's well being that uh, instead of having divided um you know existence we perhaps partner and and now how does it work that first the film releases in the theater and then it goes there or it's you know parallelly they can run there you know if it comes on ott people who want to watch it on ott can do people who want to go to theaters to watch the same content can perhaps go there because even now i don't know how many people are still willing to go to cinemas to watch it hmm. right but having said that that experience is is beautiful on its own should they not be allowed that experience or should the filmmakers not have that kind of joy to create for that 70 mm screen kind of thing you know it's it's for that experience for that you know reliving that thing maybe maybe there must be some way where they both can coexist and and you know together in this rather than one making the most of it and the other one completely going down you know because the fear is the moment the power center changes you know the corruption starts happening there also hmm. right what i mean how earlier only one section was deciding what goes over the weekend what is marketed what is immediately shunned out only these films will run only these films will run on in in these theaters the film is not mass the decision was made differently and now with another guy getting all the the power i feel you know that will start somewhere or the other uh, affecting the the kind of content that will be created right so i think they they need to be you know together in this because uh, everybody should exist right no i feel it's going to become a situation of uh... you know almost like uh, eating out at restaurants you know i don't i think the person who was going to the movies every friday might start going once a month and i think that people are going to pick and choose the films they go to theaters for because a lot of films they would rather see at home in their own space and the, with their own intimacy and enjoy it at their own uh, you know uh, leisure for all you know of all you know it might just be that if a film is really really good then i'll go out <laughs> I no, think or, or a or a film is really really big. Yeah, might be that spectacle drawing you to the larger screen and making it the event, yeah. as opposed to you know a nice intimate uh, intelligent film that you would like rather watch at home where you can hear dialogues and not be interrupted by people delivering popcorn to the seats. Uh, Hansal, okay, this question is for you from Ritu Parna Sen Gupta. Could Hansal Mehta speak about the process of adapting a book to a web show? what kind of big changes in larger vision were involved um see uh, adapting scam was uh, a different uh, uh, ball game altogether because it's a uh, journalistic uh, it's a collection of you know a lot of journalistic work done by suchita dalal and devashish uh, basu uh, so uh, it's an it's a work of non fiction it does not have any structure it does not have a narrative structure so to speak it is a collection of all the things that he did so it gave us an understanding of the scam i mean we it gave us little bit of insight into the the players in the scam hmm. we had to create we had to create a story we had to create a world so uh, you know that imagining that world luckily being a gujarati and being around at the same time you know when i was i was just out of college at that time and uh, all my friends the people i grew up with were part of gujaratis from the stock exchange so that it's a world that i've lived so sort of juxtaposing those two worlds it was a juxtaposition of those two worlds that came together you know the life that i lived the people that i knew uh, so harshad was harshad mata like this i don't know so i think it's uh, it's a process of constantly uh, so we we had to first build a story we had a book 
but we had to actually build a story mm-hmm. what was the focus so finding the focus you know it was it's a rise and fall story underdog story uh, and you know then you sort of plot all the uh, the same uh, method that you follow while writing a film or a show uh, you know you structure the story you have the beats you uh, have character arcs you have an o- overall arc and then um, you continue writing i think adaptation uh, after one point so wh- uh, what i do in a writers room is i don't read too much of the research okay there's a there's research that goes to writers i don't like getting bogged down by the research my job is to ensure that the story is being told well that you know what if this was not a true story and you know can this happen can that happen so you sort of freely imagine that world so it is a lot of this is imagined uh, and i think it's the good thing about the book is that some of the research was already there right but for writers you know both my writer uh, sumit and saurav saurav still plays in saurav day plays in the stock market but both of one is from fdii the other guy uh, sumit is also from an arts background uh, and i am from an engineering background all of us had to learn uh, you know about uh, finance uh, try and uh, you know uh, decipher all those terms decode them so in our decoding we simplified them for the audience hmm. without dumbing it down sure no and you and the audience engaged with these uh, complicated financial concepts which is quite quite a triumph for you no i i saw this film called margin call hmm. uh, which was on netflix i saw the film and you know it had it the entire film was about something called the volatility index hmm. and nobody knows what the f it is hmm. that uh, volatility index but that was the basis of the, all the drama oh shit it's going up it's going down this volatility index is going to kill us and uh, it's like lymphosarcoma of the uh, lymphosarcoma of the intestines <laughs> you know it's the same thing that how do you use these things to create drama uh, you don't uh, use them to educate people you use them to entertain people right okay the next question is from pammi sharma it's a question to juhi Uh, i want to ask how did the process of writing gulabo sitabo start how did you see the place inside the haveli in the film and a few comments also on the capitalist setup of the exchanges taking place in the film yeah very interesting actually you know it started uh, with a fairly simple thought of greed okay that that how it no matter the age no matter what section of the society no matter where you come from today's world unfortunately is so driven by that greed and to an extent that you can actually ruin everything that you have with you like in this case uh, mirza has a fantastic house that he is living in he has a wife who sort of you know is is has been perhaps in love with him at some point in time uh the tenants are paying the rent or not paying the rent but there's a very settled life that he's living and how the the desire for more mm. actually ruins everything that that uh was going right for him and it's like that you know murgi ka jo ande ki sone ki sone ke ande dene wali murgi hai right so it it just was around that space and uh uh how did i uh, imagine see see the menu I, i could write it the way you saw it perhaps is because it's pretty close to me i come from lucknow the the language the people but you know having said that it's not so much about lucknow lucknow i've used it as a character in the film to make my point even more say uh, 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 convincing to you because i know it first hand uh but such people exist all around us in our you know if you look at our extended family everybody wants that car everybody wants some bike you have to you know it, it's it's not easy you know money and anything remotely attached to it it just ruins the relationships right mm-hmm. so we all know such people doesn't matter again which socio economic background they come from um the whole uh, you know the whole thing that he takes out the bulb first okay and then he's not satisfied then he switches off the you know the main plug point then he takes away the chandelier and 
sells that also. You know, step by step, you see the darkness, how greed is actually darkening his world, right? Mm. One step at a time, he's just going closer and closer to darkness. And that exactly what the world is perhaps today. I'm not saying everybody in the world is bad, otherwise the, the world would have collapsed by now. But there's a fairly good number out there, which is just creating the darkness that we don't want to be part of the capitalistic, the, 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 you know, the world that just forces you to buy, the world that forces you to have more, the world that forces you, your whole existence depends on how much you have, uh, you know, so those things have been uh, there back of mind when you write such mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Everything can't be said directly, right. but, um, but people have picked up what they wanted to and but yeah greed greed has been the main theme for the film right i think we've covered most of the questions but I just, before we go i'd just like to ask both of you what you've been watching recently that you've really liked across various ott's doesn't matter language doesn't matter a platform but uh, tell me what you've really liked hansel recently recently I, I don't remember. Actually, I've been watching so much. Hmm. But I watched, I've been, right now, Succession is everybody's drug. <laughs> you know, it's almost a drug. And it's like really, uh, it's sad that it comes once a week. Uh, right. Uh, you know, so that, that weekly format is killing me. <laughs> you watch one episode and you say, oh, God. So I've, what I've started doing with Succession is I watch two episodes. So I watch the previous episode hmm. and then I watch the next episode. So I get this feeling that I'm binging. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, but, kharab kar diye. but I watched, uh, like I said, I watched Tubber hmm. uh, recently. And, uh, you know, whoever has not seen it, I, I would highly recommend it, you know, that uh, a moody thriller, I mean, very heavily plotted show. Hmm. And a plot that is not very new. Hmm. You've seen a similar kind of plotting in a Mirzapur, for example. But, you know, the skilled uh, direction. Hmm. Uh, yeah, the atmospherics and the performance. The atmospherics are deftly directed, the performances, all that. I mean, it's, it's very rare, hmm. uh, that kind of work uh, to see uh, on, you know, OTT. So, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm watching a lot of stuff. Sometimes some of it is... Uh, compulsion also because you know if you are uh, doing stuff for the same producer mm. you watch it so won't won't talk too much about that <laughs> right and Juhi what about you are you also a succession person like all of us or do you not still... yet not yet uh, joined the wagon <laughs> <All> mouth shows <laughs> no, not yet joined the wagon but right. a lot of stuff on movie actually okay you know that's been suddenly like a revelation because yeah, yeah. you know films from wherever whichever part of the world from the era i mean uh, that that's been quite trippy actually for me and uh, i try not to watch too much mm. because again it's it's such a comforting space right you know then Easy to get lost like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i i really restrict my viewing but uh, movie a lot of stuff on movie I must add, I I started watching Mad Men again. This is the third time I'm watching the entire show. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, it tells you, you know, that good, good stuff like The Wire. You hmm. can watch it over and over again. It came in the nineties. Yeah. I and, watched uh, Sopranos was, again last year, and that was really, yeah. you know, I, some I, of that, I, some of that stuff, you know, never grows old. The yeah. Wire, Mad Men, even Breaking Bad. I haven't seen it. I don't know how it has aged. But uh, I know Mad Men hasn't aged, uh, you know, the kind of writing and those characters. The craft, it, yeah. the craft has, just hasn't aged. There's something I saw uh, using my VPN mm. called uh, uh, Babylon Berlin, which, right. uh, which completely blew me. It's a slightly mm. older German series. Mm. But it, uh, the, the, the scale and, uh, you know, the execution, and it completely blew me away. And the use of music. Right. It was almost like what Bombay Velvet could have been. Hmm. Could or should. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, we'll just uh, ask to take one last specific question for Juhi. So I'll ask you this one because it's an interesting one. Uh, Juhi, although your work has largely resisted it so far, 
is there any genre that terrifies you at the thought of working in it and playing by its conventions yeah i i think a a, a hardcore political uh, genre because it requires a lot of understanding right and and i feel i am not that invested to have a voice a very distinct voice yet you know okay. uh some day when i have uh maybe i will attempt i mean i am still um absorbing what is happening and how is it affecting me it hasn't reached a point where i'm so convinced with my own um you know point of view uh as an observer uh i know it's affecting me hmm. but uh i don't know i'm ready yet to attempt that space sure though it is something which is uh, not just me i mean all of us are in that space yeah. currently so affected but i don't know if i'm ready yet to to right i mean uh, you know golabos is a political enough in its own way i think the fact is that we are all anyone writing a story about current india contemporary india in some way has to be political and has to get our hands dirty a little bit uh, if we are telling anything authentic but um, anyway guys thanks so much for uh, for this conversation it was a lot of fun it was a lot of interesting to see your viewpoints uh, i'm looking forward to your next adventures in the ott space and beyond it and uh, thank you so much for being here thank you thank you raja thank you sir thank you thank you bye juhi